Good afternoon, guys. What a bloodbath in the markets. Not across the entire market, but with most of the market down. We're going to look at the S&P 500. We're going to look at the QQQ, the IWM. We have a couple other stocks we're going to throw on here. One is Workhorse. We'll take a look at that. And then DGLY as well as SPI. We saw some amazing action in those ones. So we'll take a look at those. Okay, first things first, let's look at the bloodbath. <laughs> we'll take a look at this. Um, you know, this kind of reminds me a little bit of 2018 and uh, going into 2019, and I'm gonna just do the, do one of these. I kind of see, see this pattern here on the screen. It kind of reminds me, it's like maybe the beginning of this scenario. We do see a lot of volatility picking up here and especially follow through from the bears. So we will give the bears that, um, you know, we saw this run up. We were wondering when it was going to snap back. And of course it did snap back. Now, let me go down to a daily um, or daily. Let me zoom into the daily chart. You're looking at the daily. Uh, let me zoom into the daily chart here. And so I'm going to go ahead and say it now. I, I believe I've kind of talked about it a little bit, but maybe I wasn't as, as clear. So I've had a couple traders ask me what I think of this pullback. I 100% believe that this is a market top. It was it was kind of get already giving us the clues, possibly a blow off top. We were wondering that on the run up itself. And I'm gonna say it's the top with the understanding that if we can get back up, if we can get going here and get back above, I mean, a lot of damage has been done and I'm gonna get into that in a second. But if we get back above, first of all, for starters, today's, today's high or today's open, the market needs to get back above that price to consider the next numbers, which would be that zone that we were looking at before, and then 342.50. Once we can get above 342.50, then I will believe that this is no longer a top and that, it, that there could be a, a chance of a recovery here. I highly doubt it. Um, we're making lower highs, lower lows. The writing's on the wall. Even today, just looking at today's price action here, you know, we have this rising trend line, and so we saw it snap through there come Monday. We actually took took long trades on Monday, um, writing them out through yesterday and closing them today. Some of them we closed yesterday, but but for the most part, closing them today, the, it was kind of pretty sketchy this morning. Plus, we were waiting for numbers to come out. Um, you know, I don't even know what the news is. You know, it really doesn't matter. Lower highs across the board. In fact, we could just, we now we can put up a trend line going down this way. Um, maybe we'll get into that, but clean, clean back test breakdown from the back test. That was your clear short entry setup. If there ever was one, I didn't actually think this was going to happen. I believed that we would pull back a little bit today based on yesterday, the uh, um, Monday and Tuesday cl closing prices and the types of candles. We would just, you know, pull back a little bit, but we need it. And I, um, there was a, I put this in the discord for, by the way, you guys, if you, want to take a look at our discord feel free and look at the underneath in the comment section or in the description of the video i have a link to the discord a link to the website rp rbt um uh excuse me rtbtrading.com and go ahead and check it out if you would like and if you guys are new here welcome hit the subscribe button bell notification we go live sunday 5 p.m pacific standard time to go over charts and setups and anything you guys want to go over we're going to go over on sundays okay let me get off of that there we go turn that thing off perfect so price today needed to stay above yesterday's low that was on the discord the low of yesterday was 325.86 price needed to stay above that if not it's extremely bearish and the reason why it's, it's extremely bearish is because we were just down here two days ago now for the bulls or if you are long this market this is what i'll say it's possible that this stops right here and recovers it's absolutely possible in fact it could take it out down to this 320 level that we've had on the screen for a while we could come down and test that 320 and then take off what we said was price wasn't just going to fall right through this area this consolidation area without the good old north korean um you know missile launches or or um <laughs> any type of a black swan, whether that's a China trade deal, a Cuban missile crisis, it, full moon, it doesn't matter. We would need some sort of 
really bad news to fall through this level. However, because we were already here two days ago and now we're coming back into to quote unquote back test, we don't know if it's a back test just yet. Maybe it is. Maybe it's a back test. We just rally tomorrow. That's possible. I don't think it's probable at this point. Maybe we do a little bit of trading sideways action. And by the way, for the record right now, in case I don't get a video out in the, the next couple days, if we do trade sideways, if we just trade sideways from here, it would even more so not be a, a very good long entry. And the reason why is the longer we trade sideways just above support, the more likely we are to fall through support. So just kind of remember that. What we want to see to know that it's actually support is we want to see it rocket. Why well, don't I really shouldn't use the word rocket? We want to see the price rally away from support. The fact that we're here and we were here two days ago, not looking good. Possible, but not looking good. Okay, I'll get off of that. Now, intraday time frame down to the hour, hourly chart. I'll try to keep this video a little a little bit short. Um, we'll see. We have some things we need to go over, but so to feel free to skip skip through this part if you don't want to see this part. We saw a channel in here last couple days, and keep in mind when you're trading channels to keep an eye an eye on the middle of the channel. Um, you know, in my opinion, it's not in, very intuitive or lucrative to go long anywhere near the middle of the channel. And to be honest with you, I don't think it's a very good short setup either. The reason why is there's there's sometimes resistance and support down the middle of a channel. Maybe it's not as clear on this screen. Well, I do see a little bit right here, right? I see a little bit right here as far as the gap above. I see a little bit right here. But for the most part, usually there's support and resistance level right through the middle of the channel. That can be very hard and difficult to go long. Plus you have horizontal resistance right here um, first thing this morning before market opened, we posted about this being, you know, coming into resistance, even though I didn't think we would sell off like we did. I, I also know that it's not a good idea to go long because of where we were on the chart as far as price goes. So be cautious of that. Again, it's possible we rally tomorrow. Maybe we take out Monday's lows and then and then psych everybody out and then rally away. That's absolutely possible. Um, OK, let's get off of this. Let's go to the queues. And by the way, I don't mean to sound patronizing calling this a top and, you know, um, I want everyone to make money. So if you're down in this market, feel free to leave a comment under the video and let me know if you're down or if you're up or if, if, if the technical analysis is working, maybe not, maybe mine or maybe yours. Let me know what you're struggling with and we'll, we'll try to help out. Um, okay, so as far as the cues, it's almost the same thing as the S&P 500 except for the Qs were leading the way and they were even more a little bit extended and just like the S&P 500 who knows maybe this is going to be a higher low compared to Monday's low it's possible I don't think it's as likely the, the longer we stay down in this area the more likely it is that we fall through this area so just kind of remember that now if we do fall through this area we do have support around 254.83 just looking at the um, real time just looking at the chart here um, but let's do this let's go to uh, let's go back out to the daily. So with the daily chart, yes, it would be around 251.46, also support around 256.70. But in my opinion, maybe we go down here and test this 200 period moving average. By the time we got down there, maybe the 200 period moving average wouldn't really be down here anymore. Maybe it would just be slightly above because you have the 200 coming up. It's starting to coil a little bit. So it depends on how fast price can move down to it. But what's more important than that 200 period moving average, I wouldn't put a, I, well, at this point, I would put a lot of weight in the 200 moving average. But at the same time, I don't put a lot of weight in moving averages as much as I do horizontal price support and resistance levels. Same thing with trend lines. I don't put as much weight in the trend lines as I do um, price action and, you know, the support and resistance of the, of the prices. Okay, so we do have some support down here, like we were saying, 251.46, and we have support down here right around, well, we could even say, we could even say Monday's low, but again, be careful of Monday's low. Um, okay, let's go to IWM. I wanna get to the last, The we'll run through this one really quick. Same kind of scenario, you don't wanna go long in the middle of a channel. I'm gonna put the channel, well, here's the middle of the channel, here's the right side, here's the left side, and this is why you don't wanna go long, because there's some, a lot of times there's, resistance in that area. So if you did take a long trade, um, maybe go back and do a trade review and look at, uh, well, for everybody really, whether you're successful or not, 
for me personally, what what changed, what was a game changer was go, actually going back and looking at the chart and, and doing my trade review. Otherwise, how are we going to take inventory of our, our business? Well, we can't because we're, you know, we're not doing trade reviews. That's part of it. There's a lot more to it, but possibly go back and do a trade review. Look where you're going wrong with, with taking where it is that you're taking your long and short trades. You just be very cautious of that. Now for you day traders, maybe it's not as important as, you know, uh, swing traders. Maybe it's, maybe it's just not as important, but for me, for swing trading, I absolutely don't want to go long at the middle of a channel. Um, so that's a, another thing to consider. Also, we broke down below this channel on an extremely bearish, bearish, extremely bearish close. And let me do this. Sometimes when the market starts falling, you know what I like to do? I like to go to the weekly chart and really get a viewpoint of where is price going. And sometimes this does it. So we do see a little bit of weekly support down here around 137.40. And I'm not saying we're gonna get there tomorrow. I'm just I'm just saying it's possible in the next in the next couple of weeks we get down to one that 140 price area. I also see support up here at 139.40. Wait, is that the number I just gave you? <laughs> 142. Let me do this. 142. One, uh, 139, let's call it. And then 137.15. And then if we get below 133.19 at any point in the next couple of weeks, that could be detrimental to the market. So be very careful. Because on the weekly chart, we see one of these, right? I see a down move. I see this going up like this. Is this an ABC or a, or a one, two, three or whatever kind of pattern this is? Definitely could be a bearish pattern, even though we rallied. We didn't take out the all time highs, that's for sure. IWM has been considerably weak compared to the SPY and the QQQ. Okay, let's get to workhorse. Workhorse, extremely bearish close on the week. Took out last week's candle. Yes, down, d lower prices. Lower, lower, lower. Is a qu I mean, this is what the chart is telling me, and I'm not, you know, I don't know. Maybe they'll turn around and rally tomorrow. But I'm saying this is definitely a high. So trader, you can be you can be short against the high of 30.99. So that means if by any chances next week we rally up here and we get closer to this price level all time highs of 30 $30.99, you can take short trades. Mind you, the week hasn't finished yet, so we could just wait until Friday's close to see if we actually do in fact close below last week's candle. Um, what else about Workhorse? Probably a little bit of sympathy play off of good old Tesla and Neo. Uh, I'm sure these EVs, a lot of them run together. Um, you gotta understand that Workhorse was up 2,199%. So that tells you right there that this chart can easily pull back 50%, minimum 50%. Um, you know, and, and maybe even more than that, to be honest with you, we, we could come all the way back down to $4. I mean, at one day we will be, but but when that will be, it's anyone's guess. Um, okay. And by the way, I brought Workhorse up because we did take a short trade in it. That's why I wanted on here. Let's look at the daily again. So daily chart, this is bearish action. Um, but with the daily chart, keep in mind that we we could just be coming back down to this price level, of $19.83. And maybe we're coming back here to back test. So for the bulls, don't don't hit the dislike button just yet. <laughs> Let's see what happens on this price level. Maybe we'll come back here. That would be a nice little place to go long. Just keep in mind though, it depends on where we close the week. Let's see how bearish or bullish this action is based on the weekly close. Um, but as far as the daily chart goes, yeah, you could you could go long. I mean, price did consolidate underneath this area. It would take significant. It 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 would be significant damage to fall through that price area. And it will it will be significant news that that allows the chart to just simply fall right through like the good old black swan um, missile crisis news we were talking about. It would need really bad news. We consolidated in this price area for several weeks. We're looking back here at June. So from June 22nd all the way through, uh, let's call it uh, September 7th or, you know, maybe beginning of September. That's quite a while to be consolidating. So I wouldn't, ex I would not expect us to just fall right through there. So you could technically go long around this, these price areas of the consolidation. Um, and by the way, for the record, if we, for people who did, who did take the short trade, I am looking for 1890 around 1890, but fully realizing that I'm not going to try to squeeze out the rest of the juice out of the lemons. I'm going to try to probably close this position around $20.80. You know, I do want to let it run, but at a certain point here, coming up, coming up in the next day or two, I do want to close the short trade. Um, let's look at DGLY. By the way, 
EGLY. Thank you. Um, I shout out to um, uh, shout out to Tamson. I appreciate it. He called this out. He put it in the Discord, and I went ahead and took a trade on it. The reason why is is I saw I saw this recent price action back here in. You know, I don't normally trade penny stocks, you guys. I really, don't, I really don't. Every once in a while, I will. There's a specific reason why I took this trade. That's because back here in June, we saw that it rallied. It went from, uh, I'll give you an actual percentage. It rallied 700% um, back here in June 1st. I have no idea what this company does. I have no idea what the news was today. I don't even, you know, who who knows? We could go, we could go look at the news to see what it was. But I, this is the reason why I took the trade. I saw this pattern right here. And by the way, I was on my cell phone um, and I took this, I took, or I saw this pattern right here. We broke, cleanly broke above that. So I took a trade. I bought call, I bought calls and uh, the, the calls are up 430%. Um, so thank you, Tamson. I appreciate it. And, and for, you know, this is why Discord is important. We all work together as a team. Okay. Um, and you know what, as far as as far as support and resistance, we're at resistance right now. If you did take this trade, we're at resistance and we could ride this up to $3.92. That's the next logical area. Well, actually $3.67 to $3.80. And then let's not get ahead of ourselves. Anything is possible. Maybe we just start doing what we did last time and gapping higher. Um, but, but I don't know, maybe the second time around, maybe we don't go as high. Maybe we could just, you know, try to squeeze a little bit, a little bit out of this, but not get too crazy. Um, SPI. Um, this one, um, and again, Discord, it's about Discord. I'm going to just keep pumping Discord. And the reason why is that this was another one that was in the Discord. A lot of people were raging about it. Thank you, Duck. Shout out to you because it may have been someone else who posted it first, but, um, I saw it in there and Duck happened to be the one talking about it. So, uh, thank you and thank you, whoever else, um, you know. Put this one in the discord so we did this one did rally up here when i looked at it, it was up uh four thousand yeah so four thousand five hundred percent not bad for one day um you know to be <laughs> um it was crazy 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 you would almost had to have been in the trade from the from the dollar price area maybe it happened overnight and it opened up opened up today kind of thing and and just rallied from there so um once it once a, a trade starts getting up here so let's say we hypothetically entered on today's low at 357 and then we rallied up here i don't know anyone that's really going to hold this all the way up i think the name of the game in this kind of scenario is and again i don't trade penny stocks however it's not a penny stock anymore um but the name of the game is really like you know scalping this because if you're trying to well it's extremely risky to swing trade something like this yeah i mean maybe if you got in in the last month then it would be okay to swing trade but if you're in there today it might be really hard and the reason why is i'm going to go down to a shorter time frame uh let's go to the one hour okay the one hour and it looks like after hours the bid is 1771 and the ask is 1775 and the day closed it looks like the day closed at 1361 so you are doing pretty well if or maybe it closed at yeah yeah, yeah that's right or maybe it's 14 dollars it closed at let's see here am i seeing this right Okay, it closed at $14. Yeah, $14 e even. So, okay, so here's the thing is like, you know, are are we still in this trade? Are we going to hold out? Had you bought this dip going into the close, you might have been okay. But keep in mind that we could still pull back here another 40%, and that would be around $7.82. And that would still put us up for the day. We would still be up 700% on the day. Um, it was miraculous. It ran all the way up here, and then it pulled back. To me, this could just be a pullback. Maybe we'll trade sideways. To be a to be bullish or to stay bullish, we want to stay above the low of this candle right here is seven dollars seven cents. And then obviously we've already taken out this candle. The candle's low thirteen eighty eight. We could count after hours, but I'm not going to count after hours. I don't think it has it holds as much weight as um, I don't think it has holds as much weight as regular session trading does. Um, unless you're trading futures or something, and then of course after hours would be fine. But um, anyway, so SPI, beautiful. As far as uh, let's go out to the daily chart and let's look at some price targets. Well, first of all, probably already got to its price target. Um, you know, <laughs> that, that cracks me up. Four thousand three hundred. Four thousand three hundred. Four thousand percent. 
and I, you know what? I don't see it here already on the, I'm gonna go to the 10 year weekly chart. And yeah, so see right here, I'm gonna do this and draw a line across the screen. Every, th this happens where now we can see why it, why it liked this price level as, and, a, and is my line crooked on the screen? I don't know. You can kind of see it there. Okay, great. Um, You know, maybe, you know, it found resistance at this price level. And the reason why is you can see on the chart, you can see it back here, follow my cursor back here. You see that as support and then price rallies up and it pulls back, bounces on it once and then falls through. So this is a significant level on this chart. And so that's why it found resistance at this area. Um, be cautious, be cautious, be cautious. And the reason why is when we see a lot of these companies that, um, you know, don't have a lot of money, I don't know if this company does or doesn't, but it's a, it's a penny stock or currently it's a penny stock before today. So it's possible that you, you know, you might see like a um, offering, a public offering. That's, that's common. They wait for these sorts of things. They wait, they put out the good news. Uh, price runs to extreme prices and then they put out some sort of offering to, you know, they need the money to, to do what they want to do. And I don't know. And I might, I might've read this somewhere else. SPI energy, this company could be related to electronic vehicles. So keep that on the radar. Maybe we could throw this into the same arena as electronic vehicles. I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about the company. So, and let me get that line off the screen because it was up here. So if price for whatever reason gets back up to this 4667, that would be, in my opinion, that would be resistance still. But the longer that we bounce up against resistance, the more likely we are to break out. We do have this 200 period or 200 weekly moving average coming down here. And by the time we get up to it, maybe it will act a little bit as resistance. But I think this price area follow my cursor, this price area, this pivot right here will act as resistance. And as you follow up here, these prices up here will act as resistance. Now that's quite a ways away, especially since how, how far we ran today. I mean, that's pretty, pretty high up here. But keep those figures on your screen. Now, if you just want to day trade this throughout the day, I can put it back on the hourly chart. If you just want to be a day trader and you want to trade this throughout the day, let's do this. Come on, work with me. See, it's so it's such a huge move that I can't get it on my can't get it on my chart. Okay, we're on the hourly chart. So again, resistance seven dollars ten cents. I'm sorry, support seven dollars ten cents. Below that, four dollars and thirteen cents. A uh, today's close is in theory should be support. Let's say tomorrow we gap open today's closing price or $14 should be support. And let's say we gap really, you know, pretty high up there. Well, then we would have to determine that tomorrow. Like, cause there's no way I could figure out what the support and resistance level is, or go ahead and ask me in the morning on discord and I'll, I'll post some support and resistance levels on discord. That's, that's it for this video. Um, if you guys gain value, hit the like button. Uh, join us again Sunday, 5 p.m. Pacific Center time. I will see you in the next video.